Welcome everybody to our final and very short lesson on logic. Yes, I know, you're happy to be done with this stuff and I don't blame you. Today we're just going to talk quickly about how we can kind of apply the rules of logic to help us think critically in our everyday lives, which, you know, is a skill that I think is uh, not as common as it used to be and definitely could use um, some help. So for instance, um, some things you want to do is definitely read or listen carefully to things. Always uh, keep an eye and an ear open for the details and look for those hidden assumptions. Look for hidden biases. You know, are, are they trying to um, lean you a certain way? Try to identify the real issue and, and, and you know, try to identify the facts from the fiction. I know that's easier said than done sometimes. Try to understand all of the options. You know, I, I know it's hard, but try to look at the problem from multiple perspectives and try to see both sides of the so story, so to speak. Um, watch for fine print and missing information. That's really big. You know, uh, what they leave out is sometimes more important than what they tell you. Um, are other conclusions possible? Right? Uh, oftentimes what you're seeing is not the only conclusion to the facts being given. Um, and again, don't miss the big picture. Always think about how it fits in with the world in general and things that you already know to be true. Um, and, you know, just remember that things that we know to be true are not things that we find on Facebook and Wikipedia. They're things from reliable sources. Okay. Example one, building more prisons. Analyze the following argument. So we should build more prisons because incarcerating more criminals will reduce the crime rate. So let's write the argument as a conditional statement. So the first premise would be if we incarcerate more criminals, then the crime rate will be reduced, right? That's basically what they're claiming, that we should do this because more criminals will reduce the crime rate. So the conclusion is we should build more prisons because of this premise. Well, first of all, we'd have to see if that if-then statement is even true. Is there is there any data, historical facts, to show that incarcerating more criminals reduces the crime rate? So... Write the argument, including some hidden assumptions. So we should build more prisons because incarcerating more criminals will reduce the crime rate. Well, the hidden assumption, if we build more prisons, then more criminals can be incarcerated, right? I mean, that's obviously one thing, that if we have more, we can put more in them. Stated premise, if we incarcerate more criminals, then the crime rate will be reduced. So again, we want to uh, state the premise. If we incarcerate more, more criminals, then the crime rate will be reduced. But what are some of those hidden assumptions? Like, if the crime rate is reduced, then we will have a more desirable society. That could be one you know, assumption. Or uh, if a policy will lead to a more desirable society, then it should be enacted. Right? Those are all kind of the assumptions about why we should do this. And then it gives us the conclusion we should build more prisons. So... You've got to keep in mind all of those things, and then, of course, you have to test all of those things individually to see it, you know, if those assumptions are true and, and, and look at the facts and so forth. Here's our second example, banning concerts, where they say, with last Saturday's sellout crowd at the Moonlight Amphitheater, it is clear that the parking problem has gotten worse. Concert goers parked along residential streets up to a mile away from the amphitheater, badly overcrowding sidewalks, blocking driveways, disrupting traffic, in light of this parking project, problem, sorry, parking problem, future con concerts should be banned. So basically the argument here is just because they don't have ample parking, the they should not have any more concerts. So here's the premise. There's a parking problem for concerts, right? And the conclusion is future concerts must be banned. And the rest of the argument simply just lists reasons why the parking is a problem. It talks about all the different ways they you know, parked poorly. Now, is this really... Um, a good enough reason to ban all future concerts. And you, this is where you have to look at the big picture and ask yourself, well, aren't there a lot of other um, solutions for parking problems? You know, like, couldn't you maybe uh, set up an off-site parking site and shuttle people in? Is there a possibility to build a parking structure, right? There's all sorts of other things you could do. So for example, it might be possible to create new parking lots, use shuttle buses, step up enforcement, 
right? All these things that I've already talked about. So, or perhaps uh, they're responding to a few vocal residents, right, uh, who complain. But is it really that big of a deal? You'd have to make sure uh, that this is really a problem. Um, how about example three, which is our last example? Marshall was nearing retirement age and was concerned about his retirement savings. He thought the stock market was too risky, so he put his money into a certificate of deposit called a CD. Like most CDs, the one in his local bank was federally insured by the FDIC, but its interest rate was quite low. Uh, then he heard about this offer. Our certificates of deposit have the highest interest rates you'll find anywhere, more than double that of most other banks. For a combination of investment safety and high interest, there's no better choice. Well... He transferred all of his savings into one of those high-yield CDs. Two years later, the bank offering these CDs failed, and Marshall learned that he would not be able to recover any of the money he had lost. What happened? Well, it sounds like those CDs were not insured by the FDIC. So, you know, when you see these claims, you have to wonder, how can one bank possibly give higher rates than another? You know, there's got to be something going on. And the fact was that if he had read the fine print, they could see that the investments were offshore and therefore they weren't uh, insured. And so, you know, you kind of get what you pay for is the lesson learned here. And uh, that's basically it for taking a look at logic and critical thinking in everyday life.